Hi, this is Craig from PCI Geomatics, and I want to talk to you today about PCI's Digital Aerial Photogrammetry Workflow and how it can incorporate your existing elevation models. In case you didn't know, PCI software can be used to extract digital surface models, DSMs, which can then be filtered automatically to a digital terrain model, or DTM. These DTMs are required to properly orthorectify high-resolution images, what I want to focus on today is how you can use externally derived DTMs from LiDAR or other sources in our unique one-to-one -one ortho preview workflow. In this video, the main items we'll be teaching you are 1. Generating an editable DTM from a point cloud 2. Preparing a point cloud derived DTM for editing 3. Performing DTM edits and 4. Previewing ortho imagery based on DTM edits. For this video, we will be using 15 cm resolution UltraCam imagery collected over the city of Hamilton, Ontario, a mid-sized city about 100 km southwest of Toronto. So let's go ahead and open one of our scenes and look at the photos we're dealing with. And we'll just drag one of the images into focus. So as you can see, we're dealing with quite high resolution data here, so this should be really fun to work with. For the DTM, we will be generating one at 30 centimeter resolution using point cloud data. So let's go ahead and take a look at our point cloud data. So as you can see, we're working with quite a lot of points. So this will be the basis of our DTM. Before we get too far into this video, I want to clarify the difference between DEM, DSM, and DTM, as I will be using these terms a lot. First, a digital elevation model, or DEM, is a general term for a raster showing elevations. It includes both DSMs and DTMs. A digital surface model, or DSM, specifically is an elevation model that includes surface features such as buildings and trees. A digital terrain model, or DTM, on the other hand, is an elevation model that does not include surface features and shows bare earth features only. Now let's introduce the Python scripts that will form the basis of this video. These three scripts are a full PCI digital aerial photogrammetry workflow in script form. So let's open up the first one and see what we're working with here. What this script is doing is it's taking our point cloud data and over a series of steps and using a series of algorithms, creating a digital surface model that we can then use as input to our other scripts. So let's go ahead and run this first script and see what we get. So now that the script is finished running, let's go ahead and take a look at our file explorer and see what sort of files have been generated. We'll see that the script has created an output directory folder, which we'll navigate into. We'll navigate into the subfolder as well, and we'll see that a few different files have been generated. The main file that we'll be interested in moving forward is this DSM from point cloud file. For our customers who have existing DEMs and who are looking to incorporate those into our digital aerial photogrammetry workflow, this will be your starting point, and this file here will act as your existing DEM derived from LiDAR or other sources. So now that our existing DSM is ready to go, let's go ahead and look at the next script involved in the workflow. We'll just close the script we already ran and open up this second script. So this will be the main script involved in the workflow that incorporates your existing DEMs and carries out most of the steps in the digital aerial photogrammetry workflow. So we start off with a variety of import steps which are carried out automatically. Then we have a brief configuration section. In this section, you'll have to specify your input directory, where your raw air photos exist, where your exterior orientation is, and where your camera calibration file is. 
Then you'll have to specify an output directory, which will be where all the results are written to. Then you'll have to specify whether you have an external DEM available, which in our case we do because we just went through the steps to generate one from a point cloud. Then you'll have to point to the location of your existing DEM on your machine. Then we have a series of additional setup steps, which are carried out automatically, or you can tweak according to your own needs, such as setting the resolution of a DSM that's generated if that's what you want to do, but in our case we don't have to set this because we have one already. Then the next section of the script will create a linked PIX file for every raw image. Now PIX files are PCI's native data format and our software works really well with them, so we prefer to use them when we can. Then we'll set up a series of OrthoEngine projects, which will incorporate our exterior orientation file and camera calibration file as well. Then we'll create a math model for each of our linked PIX images that have been created. Math models take into account known distortions about the images captured, and they correct the images so that pixels are aligned perfectly to their true locations on the ground, so that's why we do that step. Then we'll move on to the DEM generation. We have a if-else statement here. So what's happening in this first section, if the user does not have a DEM, they will follow this path. But in our case, we do have a DEM already generated from the point cloud, so we'll be following these steps right here. Two algorithms are essential for preparing an existing DEM. The first is DEM meta. And what this script does is it adds essential metadata to the DEM file. Then we have DEM editing prep, which is our second key algorithm. This copies the DEM to a link file and creates epipolar pairs from the input imagery. Once these two algorithms have been run, your existing DEM can be edited live in focus and you can preview the associated orthos on the fly as soon as you make your DEM edits. Finally, we will convert the editable DEM, which in our case is actually a DSM, to a DTM, which is required for proper ortho rectification of imagery. Now let's run the script and see what we get in our output directory. So now that the script is finished running, let's go ahead and look at the outputs and see what we have. So we'll go back to our output directory, and we'll see that a few different files have been created here, just like before. So we have this DEMED link file, which is actually our DSM in an editable form, and then we have our editable DTM, which is really what we'll be using to orthorectify our imagery. So if we want to understand the difference between a DSM, which is this file, and a DTM, the best way to do that would be to open them in focus and compare. So let's first take a look at our DSM, which is this file. Now we'll turn on DEM editing to better visualize it. And what we'll see here is that we have a lot of building and tree cover, so all of these different sorts of surface features, and this is not good for orthorectification. So the reason we want to convert this DSM to a DTM is to smooth out the image such that there aren't any distortions in our orthorectified images. So let's go ahead and take a look at our DTM and see how that compares to this DSM right here. So we'll turn on DEM editing again. And you'll see now that we're seriously lacking any sort of surface features, which is really good. So we won't have any sorts of distortions in our orthorectified imagery. Now, if you pan around, you'll see that there are some features that have not been totally removed, but these could be removed with a bit of DEM editing with a bit of manual work. So this is the DTM, and that's our DSM. So again, notice that the DTM has all the sorts of surface features removed. So let's go ahead and clear up a bit of our screen because we have a lot of windows open. So what I want to focus on right now 
is making edits to our DTM so that we can make excellent orthorectified images. So let's go ahead and open focus one more time. And we'll bring in our editable DTM once again. We'll turn on DEM editing. So this is a pretty good looking DTM, but there will still be some troublesome areas where the orthorectified imagery will be distorted because of erroneous elevation values. This area right here of highway on and off ramps, and particularly this overpass, will pose some issues for our orthorectified imagery. So let's preview our orthos as the DTM currently is and see what they look like in this area. So we'll use our one-to-one -one ortho preview window And just as I suspected, we see some distortion in the orthos right now as the DTM currently exists. Particularly, you see that these lane markers right near the overpass are quite distorted. So we'll want to fix these orthos. So now I'm going to perform a series of DEM edits that will clean up this DTM and make our orthorectified imagery look much nicer. If you want detailed explanations of the edits I'm about to perform, then you can view our associated videos on the PCI YouTube channel. But for now, we'll go through these edits pretty quickly as this isn't really the focus of this video. So let me go ahead and make these DTM edits. So let's go ahead and make our DTM edits. And we'll apply an opposite ends fill where we'll blend the ends only. Apply that and refresh our orthos to see what effect that's had. And we see that the road is now a lot straighter beneath the overpass, so that's good. But what, we, what we've inadvertently done is created some misalignment between the orthos for the overpass, so we'll need to correct that now. And we'll apply another opposite ends fill, but this time with overwrite, because we have an existing polygon that we'd like to overwrite. And now let's refresh our orthos. And flicker. Okay, so we see that the bridge is now a lot straighter across the two orthos, but we've created some misalignment here, especially with the median and along this section here where the bridge meets the land, so we'll need to clean that up. So now we'll just create a more precise polygon surrounding the bridge. But what we're first going to do is we're going to revert the edits we just applied, but not refresh the ortho preview window. And now we're going to draw our more accurate polygon. Just want to turn on the flickering so I make sure I'm capturing the bridge accurately.
and we'll turn off the flickering now and we'll apply another opposite ends fill with overwrite and we'll refresh the orthos and now that's looking a lot better so we see that the median is now better aligned we see that this area where the bridge meets the land has been improved greatly we see that the bridge edges are straight on both the left and right sides so this is a much better looking ortho and we were able to do this without having to fully generate the orthos we've just been generating the previews so that makes our life a lot easier so now let's save the edits we've applied to the DTM and we'll move on to the next steps actually before moving on to the next steps I'd just like to make a note about how valuable it is to be able to visualize your DTM edits immediately after applying them. If we weren't able to use the ortho preview window to visualize our edits on the fly, then we'd have to generate all of our orthos for all of our input scenes. Wait, open up the orthos and take a look. If the orthos were incorrect, we'd have to reopen the DTM, apply more edits, and wait again for the orthos to be generated. With editing and visualization like this, on the fly, using your existing DTMs, we can make all the edits we want, preview the orthos as many times as we want, and only have to generate all of the orthos once, and know that when we do, they will be accurate, which saves a lot of time. Now that the ortho previews look good, we can move on to the third part of this workflow. We can move on to the third script. So let's just make sure the edits are saved, which indeed they are. And let's just close some of these windows. And we'll navigate to our third script, which is Orthos and Mosaic. And let's just take a look at what we're dealing with here. So again, we have some import steps, a configuration section, a few different additional setup steps which you can ignore or tweak according to your needs. In this case we're specifying the resolution of the orthos to be 15 centimeters. We're specifying a projection as well. Uh, for the DTM file we're pointing to the one we just edited and we're specifying our output directory for our link files as well which can all be changed uh, based on your needs. Then we'll be ortho rectifying, excuse me, we'll be ortho rectifying the aerial imagery and then we'll be mosaicing it all into a seamless color balanced mosaic. So let's go ahead and run this script and see what we get. So now that the script is finished, let's go into File Explorer and check out our results. So we'll see that two folders have been created in our, in our output directory. We have a mosaic and an orthos folder. The orthos folder contains our individual ortho rectified images, of which there are six. The mosaic folder contains our color balanced seamless mosaic, which is this file. So let's open the file in focus and see what it looks like. We'll drag it in. Zoom out for a little bit of context. Now let's zoom in to our highway overpass that we were editing and adjust the colors. Excellent. So what we see now is that we see that the uh, roads beneath the overpass are nice and straight. Uh, the overpass itself is nice and straight. Where the bridge meets the land, this sort of barrier here is nice and straight as well. So we have good alignment. A good way to test the alignment is to use a vector data set from the city of Hamilton, a roads vector data set, and see how our orthos compare to it. So let's just navigate to our roads data set. We'll add that and we'll zoom back into our area of interest. Zoom in once again. And a third time. And we see that the roads are perfectly aligned with our bridge and uh, the road underneath the overpass. The vectors match up quite nicely. So we've done a good job here today. So you can find the scripts like this one on the PCI website. Uh, we'll post a link to the developer zone in the description. Feel free to download and modify our scripts according to your own needs. 
That's really the benefit of using Python with PCI. You can easily create custom workflows and tweak existing ones for your needs. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on notifications if you want to see the latest videos from PCI. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to PCI Geomatics. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.